So I'm super excited today. I want to help you improve the quality of your ball striking off the ground with your irons and your fairy woods. Now, to do that, there is no simple quick fix. You have to follow a very, very simple process. And in this video, I'm going to share with you that process. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you some of the most popular videos on my website, dannymore.com, that are really, really helping golfers. We're going to start with the setup. We're going to then work into the backswing and the downswing, all designed to improve the consistency of your ball strike and you're going to absolutely love it. Now before I share those videos, if you're new to the channel, from your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you never have to remember a thing, I'll always put a free download practice guide in the description box below. Let's go in and have a look at this video. So let's describe what great contact is first, okay? Now, the golf thing I want you to see as a circle, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that circle. Now, this is the club swinging, okay? Now, if you look at this circle, there's a low point to that circle, isn't there? That low point is right now where that ball is, right? Now, we don't want that low point, look, this bit here, to be where the ball is. We actually wanna shift that low point of this arc, okay, ahead of the golf ball. Now, the best players are roughly around four inches past that golf ball. So this low point is after the golf ball. Now, if we look at this here, what do you notice then? The club look is tracking down and he's striking down on the golf ball, then it hits the ground. This is one of the main secrets to hitting great shots. So a lot of people, if you're inconsistent, this, you're, you don't have control over this low point. And what you're doing is, is this low point is maybe sometimes ahead of the golf ball, but then other times, look, it's back here somewhere. So now if it's too far back, you hit the ground behind the golf ball, you might even thin it and top it. If it's too far behind, look at this now, the club's coming up and you hit the top of the ball like this. If suddenly you get it a bit closer, that becomes more of a thin shot on the ground. And if you get it right there, you might just catch it quite clean, okay? Where you think, well, that's quite a good shot, but it's clean. But you're really, the margin of error is really, really tight. By pushing that low point forward, you increase the chances of making great contact time and time again. So this is what the great players are able to do over and over again. What I'm gonna do initially is I'm gonna show you what things you can do initially in setup that can increase your chances of achieving this. And then what we'll do is we'll then start to focus on the in-swing things. So I know you're eager to get started and start to work on improving your contact, but before we do, we need to assess what your contact actually is. Where is your golf club striking the ground? Is it striking the ground? Now for someone like myself who's a professional, the way I do it is, is I might scratch a line either side of the golf ball here. In this situation, to make it quite visual, I've just simply put a club either side. Now what I would expect is, is as a professional, for me to strike the ball and any mark I hit, on the ground would be happening after the golf ball in this section. For amateur golfers, maybe like yourself, you're struggling, my bet is, is you might not even be making any mark on the ground, or if it is, it's happening potentially sometimes here and sometimes here, so it's inconsistent. But we need to establish what it is, all right? So let me hit a shot for you now, and let's see where my first mark is gonna be. So let's have a look at this. This is the line here. Now, what do you notice? Come on, look at this. If you look at where the lowest point of my divot is here, it is, look, on this side of the shaft. Now, what I'd be doing is, is I would hit ball after ball after ball, and the chances are mine will always be on this side. I don't have a problem with striking it. As a professional, as you get better, you, it becomes more about directional components rather than strike. But for someone maybe like yourself, we wanna get this time and time again. So let's start to assess where you currently are. I'll also put a wonderful video down below this one, which is another way of assessing, which is one of my favorites, and I've called it Trap Man. It's actually going into a fairway bunker, drawing a line and doing something similar, because I think that is just instant kind of feedback for what you're actually doing. So let's assess where you're striking it first before we then move on to the in-swing and the pre-swing things. So how do we keep that ball then turf interaction? How do you do it consistently well? Well, there's just two things that you kind of need to control. Ultimately, I want you to visualize this. We've talked about now a circle, right? Swinging backwards and forwards. And as I'm swinging this circle, there's a swing up, there's a low point to that circle, and then the circle swings back up again. So there's always a low point to that circle. Now we've said the low point needs to be where? After the golf ball, maybe three to four inches after that golf ball. 
Now, the center of your circle is directly underneath your lead armpit. That's where you want to be. This is the point at which the lead arm and club form a straight line. Now, this is here, the longest or the maximum radius of this circle. It's happening where? Right there. This is what I'm able to control. So if you're able to control where this lead shoulder is at impact, you're going to be more likely to strike the ball here. However, if your shoulder's back here at the moment of uh, impact, you're more likely to strike the ground behind the golf ball. So location of where the middle of your hips are and your shoulders are going to make it play a big part in this. Okay, If your shoulders start to move over here, you're going to find it very difficult to get that low point after the golf ball. The second thing that is going to control how you strike it and, and that low point is of it, we just talked about it, is the radius of this swing, okay? Now the radius generally, okay, is simply this. If you look from this angle, this would be reducing the radius, this would be increasing the radius, this would be reducing the radius. Can you see this, okay? So, we want the maximum radius of this circle to happen where? after the golf ball. If you are struggling to make consistent contact, which I see with a lot of players, what you're doing is, is the radius is altering either like this, or what's happening is, is this shaft lean through impact has been released too early, so the lead arm and club now line up too early. Now the problem is, is you then strike the ground too far behind the golf ball because the club's reached its maximum radius too early. You might even then start to kind of flick up here and now in order to create room, then you start getting all kind of weird stuff. The best players, okay, are able to maintain this radius of circle. And look here as I'm coming into impact, look, look at this. Lead arm and club, there's an arc there. I've kept the, what we call, this is what we call shaft lean until I've struck the ball. Then look, the shaft starts to kind of start to line up right after that golf ball here and through. This is a wall, ultimately what we're trying to do is what the two things that really control the quality of this low point. Let's now look at things in terms of setup, which can really help this, and then we'll go into your in-swing things. So now you've got the concept of if you want to strike the ball, then the ground, you have to control where this lead armpit is relative to that golf ball, and also what? The radius of your swing, okay? With that in mind, I want you to then, I want to ask you a question. What do you think you could do at setup Start with, the, uh, with concept one, this bit here. What could you do at setup to increase the likelihood that you would strike the ball, then the ground? Have a think about it, just before I give you the answers. Have a think. Think of it this way. I want you to imagine the middle of my hips are slightly forward of center of my stance, okay? The middle of my shoulders are slightly forward of center of my stance. And more importantly, they are stacked on top of one another. What this does is it pushes this where? Forward. Now, if you are used to being back here without realizing, when you do this, you might feel like you're a long way forward. Remember, if you overdo any of these, if you start to kind of, in a sense, overdo it and start striking the ground way, way ahead, you can always adjust it, yeah? There's no absolutes with any of this, but sometimes maybe exaggerating these things can really, really be useful. But that's one aspect to get where? that weight a little bit further forward. So what I notice as I'm doing this, I've got, I feel like I've almost got 55, 60% of my weight over on my lead side. You might have to feel like you've got 70, 80%. There's no exact science, but do things that are gonna make it easier for this center of the circle here to be where? After the golf ball, okay? Let's start with that first. So I'm gonna hit a shot now, going through this motion, keeping them in place. Now I want you to do the same. There's a lot in this program, and I don't want you to be jumping from one step to the next step without actually giving things a go. I think sometimes when you kind of, you set these stations up, it's easy to go, right, do this, then this, then this, and it becomes a huge long checklist. I don't want you to do that. That gives you overwhelm. Literally go, right, I'm gonna get the middle of my hips and the middle of my shoulders stacked on top of each other and pushed slightly ahead of center here. So this is the center of my stance, slightly ahead of center. And then do you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna give that a go. And I've got my thing to measure, and I'm gonna hit a few shots simply from that position, right? Getting a feel of that. And if we look here, where is the divot again? I've just simply made this bit longer, right? So I've now got ball again, then the turf. So what I want you to do is you start with one little thing at a time, okay? Now, let's keep on this vein of what? Same concept for now. We're gonna basically get 
We're controlling this section. What else can help? Well, we've just said the middle of your hips. Watch out for how, how the alignment of those hips. A lot of the time, by the way, a lot of people are setting up and their pelvis might be fairly centered, but their bum's pushed over here. Now, the problem is, is with momentum, that's gonna send you backwards. As soon as this goes backwards here, what we're gonna do again, we're moving our whole body back, we start hitting the ground behind the golf ball. So watch the alignment of this pelvis. A lot of times I get players, it's really helpful, by the way, particularly if you slice as well, is to push your pelvis, almost angle it this way, a little bit to the right, it won't be, if you're, if you're used to being this, it'll feel like it's to the right, but it won't be. Just pushing it here, why? If we push the pelvis over here, what's that doing? It's pushing more of our body over where? The left side or this lead side of the golf ball, again, increasing the likelihood that the low point will happen where? Here, the central axis of your golf swing is right there. If we over here, we're gonna struggle, okay? So I do that. Now I would just stay there, okay? And start hitting some shots with those pieces in place. Then once I've got a feel of that, then I'll look at things like ball position, which we'll do next. So ball position is one of the most overlooked parts of the golf swing. People just are often very, very lazy with it now, but it's hugely, hugely important. If you think of it this way, we've just said, look, the central part of our swing, the point at which the club should reach its maximum radius of the circle is where? Underneath our lead armpit here. So the ultimately here is, is the ball needs to be on what side of this? This side or this side? If we want to strike it first, it needs to be somewhere on this side of the axis, right? So for all intents and purposes, this is gonna be roughly, I've got an eight iron in my hands here. I'm gonna move that ball position here, roughly two to three balls back. Now, again, if you aren't striking the ball than the ground, pushing it a bit further back than that, use a spectrum. The further the ball is back in your stance, the more likely you're gonna strike the ball than the ground. The further the ball is up closer to your, your lead foot here, the more likely you're gonna catch it too late on the arc and you're gonna catch it fat. So in this situation here, I've moved the ball two or three balls back of center. Now, all it basically means is, is the way I look at ball position is the ball position relative to where the central axis of my swing is, which is right here. If I move this axis back here, then the ball just doesn't make any difference whatsoever. I'm still gonna catch it fat. But if I rotate now and I've maintained the central part of my axis on this side of the golf ball here, when I come down now, I'm gonna catch the ball, look more likely ball than the ground. Why? Because the ball is on this side of the swing. You follow? So super, super important. So focus on that ball position. You can see here, I've got a club here as an alignment. You could almost do this where you get your feet together, take a, Small step to, to your, uh, towards the target and a slightly bigger one away from the target here, it's just ahead of center. And from there, I can play a few shots and get a sense of that. So this is all about controlling this part here. Let's hit a few shots with that ball position slightly back. Simple as that. And again, look, you can see not a single mark behind this line here, everything is forward of that line. This is the secret to ball then turf contact. Now we get into the fun part, okay? So hopefully what you've done is you now preset the body at setup to increase the likelihood that you're gonna make that beautiful solid contact. So what do you do in the swing? Well, let's keep things really simple to start with, okay? I've got clubs here that are gonna show me where I make contact with the ground. If you're on a golf course, you can't really do this, but what you could do is grab a tee peg, so if it's not a competition, scratch a line either side look of the ball, right? And the only thing I want you to do on the course as stage number one is get yourself set in your now new setup position, really kind of feeling where that body needs to be and make some swings, paying attention, or, and I'll say that, paying attention to where your club is striking that ground. And I say paying attention because sometimes I want you to here, I really want you to get the club striking the ground after the golf ball. But sometimes when people make that the focus, they like this and they make it too rigid. What I want you to do is simply trust the subconscious part of your brain as you do this. So as I'm making some swings, I am paying attention to where my club is striking the ground. Because I'm paying attention, let's say you paid attention and you noticed it was behind here. Because you paid attention, trust that your body now will start to go, oh, I'm there. And allow it to naturally, all on its own, start to adjust until you are consistently striking the ground 
after that golf ball. But please, 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 don't make a concerted effort to do it because that's not what we're after. We want a beautiful circle, right? So once you've got a feel of that, just simply immediately walk straight to the golf ball and hit a shot. Beautiful, okay? I there, look, no mat, ball, then the ground after that shot. So this is the first drill I would love you to start with. Pay attention to where your club is landing next to that ball. So I hope you really, really enjoyed that. Now look, that is enough to be get going with. That is gonna be huge for your ball striking with your irons and your fairwoods off the ground. Now look, if you wanna continue this series, and not only do it once you've done some practice with this, but if you wanna start continuing this series, the full series is actually on my website. We go into it in huge detail. We talk about radius control. We start to give you loads more drills that you can uh, use for your irons, your woods. We start to go into how to increase the distance of, of your irons and your woods off the ground, as well as um, your accuracy too. Now, uh, just for a short period of time, and just as a way of saying a huge thank you for your support this year, I've got a special code. If you just type in thank you 23 at checkout, you'll get a 25% discount on the entire series. You can cancel any anytime. It's a subscription service, you can cancel any time. But there's no need necessarily, you know, just enjoy this, get started. This will be a real big help. But if you do want to go into it in a bit more depth and a bit further, then head on over to my website. It'll be a huge help. Plus, you get to chat to me personally. So I hope you enjoy. Um, I'll leave the links down in the comments. Uh, top comment below and the description. But until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.